Okay, let's look at look, something a little bit different that um, is very easy with VS Code mixed with a little tool of mine. We're looking at some DDS source for a physical file. I've called it PII Gubbins because it's personal identifying information stuff. It's a very, very simple physical file. This is how I would have defined it in SEU back in the day. And we're going to compile this file and then we're going to convert it to SQL and see the exact same table as a physical file versus an SQL table. Okay, so here's the fields that we have to find within our DDS, a first name, a surname, a social security number, basically a bunch of alpha fields and one packed numeric just to throw a different object type in there. So let me come out of SEU. I'm going to compile that into my library, which takes a long time to compile on my small little IBM i system. Use subset so PII is all we see. So there's our file. So let's have a look at this file description. If we have a look at PII gubbins, if I display this file, here's the file that I just created. Here's my file level ID. If I go to the bottom, here's the member. And of course, this is what we all know is very important, our record format level identifier. Um, why is that important to us? Because if they're different and a program is using that file, the, it knows the file has changed, so it will level check. But if we convert this physical file into an SQL table, the level identifier remains the same. So our programs just get to use SQL tables as opposed to physical files. And what I've found uh, over years of trying this, whenever you create something as a table, under the covers, IBM's doing some magic with SQL. Your performance is greatly improved writing and reading to those tables. So let's convert this file to SQL. Now, I have a utility command that's part of the projects for iToolkit. Retrieve DDL. The command is retrieve DDL source. And it says, right, what do you want to retrieve the DDL source for? So I'm going to type in PII gubbins, which is in nlitten. It's a table I want to create. It says, where do you want to put it? In this case, I would normally go and put it in QSQL source, right? In, in my library. So it will go into this QSQL source down here. And you can see there's currently no members in my QSQL source in my library. So let's put it in QSQL source in Enlitten. Um, how about we call it PII SQL Gub? We can call it anything we like. Member type is going to be SQL. I want to create the file of the member if it doesn't exist. Um, and I want to edit it. I want to see what it generates after it runs this retrieve DDL source. I'm going to press enter. It's done it. This is what it's retrieved. Hey, look, you can already tell straight away this is a version of that table, right? So it's auto generated some comments at the top telling me the version of OS that I'm on. And so I could update this and add whatever I like. It could tell me that I'm doing a crate table called PII Gubbins, but I'm going to call it PII SQL Gub. It tells me that the reuse delete no parameter on the physical file, there is no equivalent of that in SQL. So it just says it ignores it. So it puts a comment in there saying, I'm just using that. I'm ignoring the reuse because we're going to reuse anyway. These are my fields. Remember we looked at first name, surname, social security number, all of the alphas. What SQL has done is it's told us the exact definition is the same. It's also told us the CCS ID that's being used and it's not null and there's a default value of blanks and you can see that the packed numeric has been defined as a decimal 10 zero exactly the same and it gives it the same record format name within sql because in my dds source i had some um, field names text descriptions going against the fields. It's also generated SQL to do that. So it tells me that there's a, a label on the field and it defines all of the field name text. So that's what it looks like in SEU. You can see it's clunky going up and down through SEU, right? So let me come out of SEU 
Let's get rid of SEU completely and whip over to SQL source. This is my retrieved DDL source, which is of a type SQL statement. And if I open this within Visual Studio Code, we will hopefully see that glorious source member. And here she blows. And this is ready to run as a create statement from IBM I and create the table. In fact, let's do that. Is this doing everything we want? We want to change a new file. We want to call it PII SQL Gub. So let me just change the field names. I love this feature within VS Code. When I define one instance of a field, look, it shows me all the other ones. So I could do a replace all, but I'll just do these manually because I can. Okay, so what we're doing here, we're creating a table called PII SQL Gub in the library. We're setting some labels, we're labeling our fields. So this should end up looking exactly like our table that we generated. So let me close this and save it. Just for ease of use, I would normally generate this within VS Code, but let's do all this from the command line so you can see everything. You can see there's no uh, under the covers jiggery pokery going on. Oops. There's some under the covers fat fingering going on. So I've created PII gubbins in my library. If I look at QSQL source, Here's this statement we just did. So let me just run this statement. So if I just do a run SQL statement, it's PII SQL gub. Idiot. It's QSQL source in, in Litten, and the member is PII SQL gub. So this will run all of those source member statements. It tells you table created but was not journaled. So let's display that file statement, right? If we look at PII gubbins, this is our original DDS one. We open a new tab. A few seconds of jiggery pokery letter. I've got two sign on sessions running. So let me display the file description in Nlitten of PII gubbins. Okay, so down here on the right, this is the DDS table called PII Gubbins. Up here on the left is SQL Gub. Now you can see that the SQL file type says table and it has a file level ID. As you can see already, we've got some big differences here. Here it says it's a, ta it's a physical and a different file level ID. But the important thing is if we go to the bottom, The record format level ID is exactly the same. So what that means is this new file can be used by all of your existing RPG, SQL, CL, C, whatever, COBOL programs without any level checks. The program doesn't care. As far as it's concerned, the DDS file and the SQL table are exactly the same and it will use an update just in the same way. But as I said before, if you're using SQL tables, they definitely perform faster. IBM's doing some magic under the covers with SQL. Plus also, if you're a shop that just prefers to use SQL, you can very easily convert all of your old DDS into SQL. Now, when it comes to logical files, um, you could do the same thing, but obviously a logical file is basically uh, a combination of an index and a view, right? So you could do the same thing, retrieve that and create an index and a view. Perhaps I'll do another in, uh, video on that later. But for right now, there's a very simple example, taking a DDS, creating some SQL, using run SQL statement to create it, and having a brand new SQL identical version. Right. All in VS Code. We do like it. So VS Code for the win and SQL is the future, baby. Good luck.